Hello, thank you for joining me. This is our film number seven in Getting Started in SolidWorks, and this is going to be our last film here, because what i like to show you is uh, what we're going to be doing to finish our model. We're going to be putting in a slotted uh, screw uh, hole in here. It's going to be uh, kind of a countersink hole, and uh, it's going to be of a specific screw size, and uh, what we're going to be using is a hole wizard function. Nice thing about the hole wizard function is it does a lot of the lot of the functionality for us in regard to putting that hole in. It isn't just a straight hole, but it's going to be a countersink hole, and uh, it's going to be uh, of a specific size that will allow a specific screw size to actually fit that hole, which is kind of neat. It's very interesting and a very useful feature that you find in uh, SolidWorks. So, enough said. Let's go ahead and do it. Yet our number, f our, our our fifth feature and our uh, feature in our our fifth feature in our command manager, if you don't mind me saying so. We're going to go to Hole Wizard, click on that guy, and if you don't have it selected, we're going to start from the very top, and the way these work is you start from the top and work your way down. Uh, this probably is already selected for you. You want to make sure you click on countersink. Uh, the standard is going to be ANSI inch, and the type is going to be flathead screw. If you don't have that uh, already selected, we're going to go ahead and choose the default settings here. Flathead screw 100 is what it is because there's a flathead screw 82 in here too. Size, let's go ahead and choose the size. Uh, I'm not certain what the default setting is going to be. It's probably much smaller than uh, the half an inch, but uh, let's choose a 3 eighths of an inch size. And everything else we're going to go ahead and choose uh, the default settings. We're going to make no additional changes after that. The second thing you need to do in order for the whole wizard to work, you can't just do the green check mark here. It's not going to like you for that it's going to want you to select your position so it's your second tab and that tab is over here with positions and what it does is it allows you to select a surface first like this surface and wherever you click your mouse is going to put a point so I already clicked it once I got a point up there click it again it's giving me a yellow preview of what we're likely going to get if we do nothing else additional to this but of course we're going to do more stuff to this and what you want to do while you have the sketch option open here is not only just drop uh, these points in here randomly, is we want these points in a very specific location. So let's do this. Let's, while we're in the sketch element here, let's go ahead and draw some reference geometry. I'm going to click in the midpoint of that edge up here to the midpoint of the edge down here. And we're going to take these points and we're going to move them right on that edge. Everywhere we move that point, that preview is going to come with us. So we're going to move that one to that edge this one not to that edge but to that line, that center line we just drew. And then we're going to add some symmetry here. And let me show you a new sketch element here that we haven't talked about yet and that's the mirror command. And in order to do that we need to have a center line we're going to, uh, to, to use. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line out here. I'm going to move this over here a little bit so I can pick up the midpoint of that edge over here. And we're going to use this as a mirror element. So we're going to mirror it about that line. So you notice that these points right now are blue, means we can they, they're not fully defined, we can still move them around, but they do have a coincident relationship with that center line that we just drew in there, which means we can move it up and down that line, but we cannot move it off that line. Let's go ahead and mirror that down to the bottom. So if you click on that point and this mirror line, this line, the center line here, and go to the mirror command on our uh, sketch commands portion of our command manager, go to mirror entities, it puts that on the bottom. Remember the symmetric relationship we added before? It adds that here too. So we can take these two points and move them around. They still are symmetrical about each other, about that uh, center line in the middle. Kind of cool. So now when we put the, the dimension in here, which we're going to do on that point, we're going to put it on that point, and we're going to select this line so it's dimension from the very top. We're going to make sure that those holes are maybe one and a half inches from the top. And that's a preview of what it's going to look like, and that looks pretty good. Now before we leave this, let's put in one more hole in the middle. The way you do that is you just grab the point, which is on the sketch portion of the command manager. Grab the point, looks like a little star. We're going to put in, uh, if we can, choose the midpoint of one of these lines and put that in there. Now we can do the green check mark. It puts the hole wizard uh, function in there, that 3 eighths of an inch flathead screw countersink hole, all the way from the front to the back. It looks like we're pretty well set. If we wanted to change the size of that hole, and it looks a little bit small compared to everything else here, we can right click on this, 
and either go to Sketch 8. Sketch 8 will allow us to uh, resketch those uh, points that we put in here. Sketch 7 allows us to define a predefined uh, cut extrude that we have in here. There's a rotational extrude. But more than anything else, we want to go back to the function and edit the feature and go back in here and change some of the parameters associated with that. And the only parameter we're going to change is that 3 eighths of an inch, we're going to make that a half an inch. And we can go back to the green chuck mark, and that looks a little bit more robust. All right, that's the end of our part here. That's the end of this video series and getting started in SOLIDWORKS. Hope you enjoyed it. Last thing you want to do is you want to save it before you close your file out. And that's it. Please join me for other videos.